Well, let's see why it's Steve Arts 89. Well, Celine Dion. Um, I haven't always been the biggest fan. Being a Madonna fan, and Madonna's a bit of a mean girl, so I was always a bit of a mean girl when it came to other performers. I wasn't very kind to them. Um, but over time, I've started to appreciate Celine Dion. Her personality, she's a very quirky, sort of weird individual, but she's very interesting, and she does have that amazing voice, and she takes it seriously, and she performs um, like an athlete. And to hear recently that she had basically cancelled a tour and had then had to stop touring because she had a, um, what I heard was um, degenerative, degenerative disease called stiff person syndrome. And I thought, well, that's her done because if she's at a point where she can't perform and this is degenerative, it's like progressive, um, she's not going to get better. Um, well, she did a documentary called I Am Celine Dion and it's all about this really long journey. She's been suffering for years and she's been able to get around it but it got to the point where she couldn't. And the positive thing, I think, is what happened was she didn't have the right information, she didn't have the right um, treatments, so she wasn't in the best place as she could have been with this disease. So the idea is she's going to get to a point where she can perform again, and maybe it keeps going and maybe she can't perform later on, but there seems to be an optimistic idea that she's going to get back on stage. And it's, it's kind of beautiful to see her talking about how she felt afraid, she felt she couldn't speak, she didn't know who she was without her voice, she couldn't perform, she had like this identity crisis, you know, who, who is Celine Dion, this person people expect who can hit these notes, if I'm not that, what am I? Um, it was really interesting to see someone dealing with that sort of, um, someone on her level dealing with that sort of identity crisis and issue, but the other issue was just seeing how, how pain, painful this this um, disease is and how bad it was for her, there, there's there's a horrible scene where you see her having a full body seizure and she's frozen and she can't move, she can't speak, but she's conscious and they're talking to her because they know she can hear but she can't do anything and I just thought, I don't know how often this happened and to think of her, her kids seeing this, I know they're not kids anymore, they're grown men, but they're, that's still their mother, they're still her kid, um, their kids, her kids. So it was just really, like I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't crying when I was watching that, so it was like... I didn't realise it was that bad, and um, the idea that there is hope that she's going to get past it. But the other issue that people are talking about is the documentary doesn't seem to have a lot of hope. Um, it just seems to document what happened. When she's doing all these interviews, she's like, "I'm going to come back. This is my voice. I'm, you know, I'm speaking because I want to speak, and I'm, you know, going to get back on stage. You know, if I even if, if I have to crawl on stage, I will do it." And that needed to be at the end of the documentary, is what I'm hearing. The documentary is. Is, is very serious and doesn't have that end where it's just like, you know, that, that ray of hope. So I found that concerning. That was one of the criticisms I kept hearing. But um, I just have more sympathy for her. And I did see her live. I went to see her live. And I'm so lucky because um, the night I went, John Farnham went as well. So I got to hear him perform um, as well. But, um, I mean, when she hits that note and all by myself, and she could do it then and she, you know, was able to do it unlike some people who... They can't do life what they what they have on you know their records and that it was amazing. Everyone was basically on their feet cheering. It was just an amazing moment to hear someone with that talent and that force in their voice be able to harness it. And you know, it was amazing. I'm glad I saw her in case she doesn't tour again. But um, the little compromises that she did appear to make to keep performing were the kind of compromises someone you know who's above so far above everyone else that you know it's not really. They're still so far above everyone else, no one would even notice. Like, I don't think anyone noticed that she was having problems with her voice. But um, she's a perfectionist, but it did get to the point where she couldn't control it. And there's parts where you see in the interview where she's talking or trying to sing and she can't control her voice. And that was sort of heartbreaking to see. And that then, like I said, that she then had the identity crisis of who am I without the voice? Who is Celine Dion? Who, who you know, just, it's interesting. And I haven't watched the whole thing. I've just seen a bunch of interviews and segments and things on um, the news and stuff she did. But um, I just want to comment on it. Um, I plan to see it, but it's on Amazon and I don't have Amazon. I had Amazon last month, um, mostly to get some um, free shipping on some parcels. But next time I have Amazon, I'll check it out. But um, I usually don't do streaming services because I have so many DVDs and Blu-rays that I've bought over the years that I will probably never get through before I die. Um, I can't really justify a streaming service. This is something I absolutely have to see and can't wait. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of 
Celine Dion's journey with um, stiff people, stiff person syndrome. 